Hi, I'm Pure Excellence, the most important political mind this side of the United States. But let's just explore this idea. I'm gonna pass it to my homeboy, James. James, go ahead and take this away. Nine. The Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community presents, ultimately, all of these suits directed at Palm Beach County in the 90s. Donald Trump's Long History of Lawsuits Part 2. Ultimately, all of these claims directed at Palm Beach County in the 90s. Resulted in triumphies for Trump, even if the matches themselves ended in settlement offers. Trump's Business Lawsuits. Donald Trump in Atlantic City Lawsuit. Donald Trump was able to develop enough momentum from his property profession to branch out into various company ventures. This transition began with his acquisition of numerous gambling establishments in Atlantic City, New Jersey, over the 1980s and 1990s. From there, he also explored entrepreneurial opportunities in food, education, and home entertainment, more on that later. Here are simply a few of the most intriguing gaming, entrepreneurship, and other business-related claims combated by Trump. 1990-1991, Marvin B. Rothman v. Donald J. Trump and Trump Organization Incorporated. Marvin Rothman Lawsuit Against Trump In addition to his numerous realty tasks in New York and Florida, Trump meddled a number of gaming-related jobs in New Jersey by acquiring and remodeling several gambling establishments found on the Atlantic City boardwalk. First it was the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino in 1986, followed by the Trump Marina, Trump Taj Mahal, and Trump World's Fair in the late 80s and early 90s. Although all of Trump's forays into gambling establishment ownership were dreadful and led to insolvency, the Trump Taj Mahal was notorious for the numerous legal fights focused around him. Even prior to purchasing the property, Trump had to fight talk program host Merv Griffin with several suits just to obtain ownership, as described in the Los Angeles Times Post from 1988. Trump Taj Mahal Photo taken by Jesper Rotel Belay, CC by 3.0 Nevertheless, the most notorious lawsuit relating to this doomed property involved monetary analyst Marvin B. Rothman. According to a New York Times post from that time, he was fired from his position due to extreme criticism and numerous lawsuit dangers from Trump. The factor for the realty mogul's ire was that Rothman had gone on record stating that the Trump Taj Mahal was bound to stop working due to high operating expense and an imminent slump in the market. After being continuously badmouthed by Trump in journalism, Marvin Rothman chose to submit a $2 million fit versus Trump in his business for character assassination in order to defend his professional credibility. Winner draw. Ultimately, the libel claim ended in a settlement. Since this means that no main verdict was reached, Trump wasn't proven to have participated in libel or slander. However, the settlement likewise meant that he had to exercise a satisfactory agreement with Rothman in exchange for cleaning up his track record. The particular information of this settlement are personal. Nevertheless, according to a statement given to the AP, Rothman was exceptionally delighted with the results. As a New York Times article from 1991 explains, the financial consultant also received a payout of $750,000 from his former employer as bought by an arbitration panel from the New York Stock Exchange. Nevertheless, what's most substantial in this case is what took place over the next couple of years. Rothman's preliminary remarks that got him in a lot of difficulty were shown to be accurate after the Trump Taj Mahal struggled to remain open and eventually went under. This ultimately solidified his track record as a skilled monetary expert, resulting in a draw for both parties. 2008-2009, Donald J. Trump v. Deutsche Bank Donald Trump vs. Deutsche Bank Lawsuit Trump's overblown and highly ambitious business strategies have actually unquestionably led to some impressive victories, however it's also led to lots of disastrous losses. In fact, it can be argued that Trump's true strength in organization isn't discovering great deals, but steering his escape of the bad ones in order to avoid the effects of failure. The best way to highlight this point is through his lawsuit against a German bank in the late 2000s. 2008 saw the start of the Great Recession, a term now used to explain the worst international monetary crisis since the Great Depression. One of the most significant aspects that caused this economic downturn was the bursting of the subprime home loan bubble, which involved giving significant high-risk loans to homeowner with bad credit. Unsurprisingly, much of these loan providers were unable to pay back their loans which is specifically the circumstance Trump found himself in when he needed to pay back a $334 million loan to Deutsche Bank for a Chicago high-rise building his business was in the procedure of building. When facing potential consequences for failing to repay this loan, Trump chose to take legal action against the bank for $3 billion in damages to his reputation and the job. 
A 2008 New York Times post outlined his validation for the suit, which was generally to attest that he shouldn't be required to repay the loan in the initially agreed upon period. Winner, Trump. The crux of Trump's argument detailed in his suit was the presence of a force majeure provision, which is likewise typically described as an act of God. Force majeure is a typical addition to lots of legal agreements that removes liability from either party to satisfy it if they are affected by occasions that are out of their control. And according to Trump, the 2008 financial crisis counted as such an act, rendering him no longer beholden to the initial offer. As this archived post from the Wall Street Journal describes it, this preliminary suit caused Deutsche Bank to submit their own countersuit versus Trump for $40 million. These dueling claims opened up brand new settlements regarding the loan, which caused both cases being settled out of court the next year. And while the bank did eventually get their cash back, it was on terms that were far more beneficial to Trump, making him the clear winner in this legal fight. Trump's real strength in business isn't discovering good deals, but steering his way out of the bad ones in order to avoid the effects of failure. 2010 to 2016, Tarla Make F, Sonny Lowe, Art Cohen in New York v. Donald J. Trump, Michael Sexton, and Trump University lawsuits. Trump University lawsuit. Over the years, Trump would utilize his brand name as a self-made billionaire to branch out into a range of organization offers and endorsements, some relevant to his experiences, and others not a lot. However, when he attempted to take advantage of this brand name into Trump University, he encountered a good deal of legal resistance both from a specific and state level. In the start, this resistance took the type of letter sent by the New York State Department of Education and the Deputy Commissioner for Higher Education. According to a 2010 NY Daily News article, the factor for these departments' objections was that Trump was deceptive prospective students by labeling his company as a university, regardless of not having any official accreditation or offering any official college credits. To prevent these grievances from intensifying into legal action, business was relabeled the Trump Entrepreneur Initiative. Nevertheless, this action alone wasn't enough to secure Trump and his for-profit educational institution from extreme lawsuits. Trump University became the cause of three claims over the next six years. In 2010, a class action claim alleging scams and false advertising was submitted by former students Tarla Maka F. and Sonny Lowe against Trump's school. In California, a similar class action lawsuit was filed directly against Trump by businessman Art Cohen three years later, declaring that his school's live events were deceptive and potentially involved in racketeering. Finally, Attorney General A.G. Schneiderman represented the state of New York in suing Trump and the school's President Michael Sexton for $40 million in 2013, alleging relentless deceptive, unlawful and deceptive conduct. Winner, Plaintiffs From remarks made by Trump and his legal team about his school and the judge commanding his case, it appears that they had every objective of combating these legal fights to the end. Nevertheless, the events of the 2016 election would alter these strategies and force Trump to reach another settlement. Trump initially tried to combat Schneiderman's $40 million suit with a problem of misbehavior in 2013. Nevertheless, the grievance was tossed out and he was discovered personally accountable by the Supreme Court one year later. This action strengthened the two class action lawsuits, which eventually required Trump to pay out $25 million in order to settle the cases before his governmental term. Just like many of the cases formerly discussed, the conclusion of these claims meant that Trump was never officially condemned of any misbehavior. Nevertheless, the closure of Trump University and the cash he was required to pay are strong indicators of his defeat. Trump was never officially condemned of any misbehavior. However, the closure of Trump University and the money he was required to pay are strong signs of his defeat. Trump's Entertainment Lawsuits Trump vs. NFL Lawsuit While the foundation of Trump's empire remains in his colossal realty tasks, his effect on popular culture and entertainment are similarly substantial to his present tradition if not more so. Starting with the publishing of his pseudo-memoir Trump, The Art of the Deal in the late 1980s, he's likewise dabbled in beauty pageants, sports, and network TV. As is customized, his ventures into the show business resulted in lots of high-profile legal battles. Numerous of these incidents involved allegations of misbehaviors committed by Trump, such as sexual harassment and financial negligence. Nevertheless, many more lawsuits have been submitted by Trump against his critics and detractors in order to safeguard his brand and gain utilize in aggressive company negotiations. Here are a few of the most infamous lawsuits connecting to Donald Trump's home entertainment career. 1986, USFL v. NFL Trump vs. NFL Lawsuit In addition to property endeavors and entrepreneurial projects, Donald Trump has actually been known to be something of an athlete. 
He's an avid golfer having actually stated that it's his primary type of exercise and a member of the WWE Hall of Fame. He also delights in seeing football, which may have been the incentive for his purchase of the New Jersey Generals, a football group in the fledgling United States Football League. The brief history of the USFL is remarkable, from its preliminary rise and appeal to its closure just three years later on. It started in 1983 as an indirect rival to the National Football League by playing video games during its off-season in the spring. But as a narrative history published by Esquire describes the events, Trump would encourage the league to more strongly target the NFL through a mix of negligent costs, schedule changes, and lawsuits. In 1986, the USFL was on the verge of overall collapse. In a last-ditch effort to survive, Trump and the other league owners jointly agreed to take legal action against the NFL for $1.7 billion. According to a law evaluation short article from Berkeley about the case, this was an antitrust lawsuit claiming that the NFL was avoiding the USFL from broadcasting on several of their own television stations. Although not specifically pointed out by name as a plaintiff in the claim, Donald Trump acted as a witness in the trial and was considered the main motivator for taking legal action. Winner, USFL, sort of. Based upon from previous team member Dave Lapham and documentarian Mike Tolan in the Esquire article, it appears that Trump's actions with the USFL had ulterior motives. Rather of wishing to establish both leagues as real competitors, he wished to require the NFL to make a merger or just bring him on as an NFL group owner. In that sense, the antitrust suit would be another of Trump's executions of lawfare to require a favorable organization negotiation. What wound up happening instead is that the USFL won its case against the NFL. Nevertheless, this wound up being a pyrrhic success given that the NFL was only needed to pay out $3 and had no interest in a merger. This insultingly low payout would end up being the death of the USFL and completion of Donald Trump's profession as a football group owner. It appears that Trump's actions with the USFL had ulterior motives. Instead of wanting to develop both leagues as real rivals, he wanted to force the NFL to make a merger or just bring him on as an NFL group owner. 1995-1997, Jill Harth and American Dream Enterprise v. Donald J. Trump, Nick Ribas, and Roger Wagner. Trump vs. Jill Harth American Dreams, Sexual Harassment Lawsuits In the mid-1990s, Trump acquired the Miss Universe appeal pageants, which included Miss USA and Miss Teen USA, and assisted handle them up until 2015 when he sold the whole organization to WME-IMG. Much like relatively all of Trump's other organization ventures, this was also the motivation for numerous aggressive claims such as the ones he submitted against a previous candidate and a TV broadcasting business. But there's one specific legal fight during this time that's especially marvelous and interesting when considering Trump's choice to pursue this particular field of service. As a rich playboy from New York, Donald Trump has both brought in and pursued a lot of attention from females for many years. Consequently, his actions in and out of wedlock include another ramification to his choice to enter this field as do various grievances directed at him from others in the market. Although much of these grievances were kept out of the courts, one allegation of sexual misbehavior versus the controversial business owner did become a full-blown suit. In 1992, Jill Harth and George Aureni approached Trump to participate in their American Dream Festival by assisting them arrange a calendar girl pinup competitors. According to the couple, Trump revealed an interest in both the beauty pageant and in Harth herself, which led to her filing a lawsuit against him and two of his associates in 1997. This match declared that Trump and two of his staff members Nick Ribas and Roger Wagner sexually propositioned and attacked her several times. Two years prior to the $125 million harassment suit was filed, nevertheless, Jill's partner George and his company, American Dream Enterprise, also took legal action against Trump for breach of agreement. 